It's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back. Welcome back. So finally, finally, I got everything uploaded, I think, on to Teachable for the mini book class. I intended to have it done much, much earlier in the week. However, I was having some internet connection issues and Sometimes I would load a file and it would just zip right up and then I would load something just this teeny tiny little document and it would sit on 4% for half an hour. So I don't know what was going on, but it took forever. But it is, it is all up. I'm almost certain I will keep checking to make sure I didn't forget anything. There's a lot. That's the thing. So after I was already committed and drafting and filming, I realized that this class was more complicated than I had anticipated because every single book that is converted for mini book printing is a ton of work because nobody does that for you. <laughs> that is something you have to, you have to just suck it up and do it yourself. And like, like this book, the Alice in Wonderland book is over 200 pages. So I have to make sure that the imposition is correct. All the pages are in order the way they're supposed to. Oh, wow. So far, there are six printable books, the pages. There's uh, Alice in Wonderland, which is a big, huge, honkin' book. And then there is the the Flora book, and this is, this is also a sizable one. And then there is the Moths and Butterflies. There is the Poe short stories book with the Harry Clark illustrations, which are so, so cool. They're very dark, but very, very cool. There is the bird lore book you know, for the burbs. And then the how to know the ferns, fern specimen book. Something to, to just let you know is that these two books are the only ones that really have to be in order if you want to read them. These are the two. These are the crucial ones that really need to be in order because they are, they're like, you know, novels and stories. So that, that have to be in order. These, however, oh, this is, this is a blank, blank journal. This is one of the ones we, we play with. Sorry. So these don't necessarily have to be in the order that the signatures go. You can mix up the signatures. The only thing that I would suggest is putting the title page in the front. So, so you know, there's that. And then some of the books have like a little ex libris plate in the back. Some of them, I don't think all of them do. So that would be the last page. But other than that, you can kind of just mix and match and swap stuff around as you see fit. So it's not quite so crucial to get page by page by page as Poe and Alice. Um, the only thing is the Ferns book. I think it's the first, the first two signatures have kind of a little bit of an order to them. But other than that, and even then, it's I don't even think it's that crucial because I think each page would stand alone. It's not like one page depends on the next. It's just that first signature is kind of an introductory about the terrariums and the Wardian cases. And then there's like a little little bit of verbiage about ferns. And then there's another title page. Other than that, it's really not as crucial. These can be mixed and matched as, as you see fit if you choose. Or one signature that's swapped with another one, it won't be this big, fat, hairy deal. Nobody will notice but you. 
but you will probably notice because <laughs> if you're anything like me you probably notice like Alice in Wonderland I mean if you want to be able to read it, it it needs to be in order if you don't want to read it then it doesn't it doesn't matter and the same thing with the Poe's stories they really really should be in order if you if you want to be able to read them those are the only the only caveats that I wanted to throw out there these two books because it's crucial that they are in order both have a, a diagram that spells out okay this is signature one this is signature two and it gives you kind of an overview of your printed pages because when you print out the pages then it they're not in order if you look at the page it is not in order there's something on the front there's something on the back and it looks like everything's all jumbled up and it's because you have to fold the pages in a certain way so that one page and then the second page is on the back of that one and then the next page that's not even connected to this one that has to have the third page and oh. imposition is one of those things that um now i know why it's e extremely expensive software that does it for you but it usually doesn't do pages this size so it wouldn't do me any good anyway so i just suck it up and i just do it man I just just get it done. I figured it out and I got a diagram and I just I just do it. That's another reason why this class took me a lot longer than um, I thought it was going to. So um, that brings me to my next point. There are a couple of things that you will need to have in order to be able to print out your book pages. Now I'm not talking about blank journals and sketchbooks. You can make these all day long without these two things. Don't have to worry about it. You can take the class and make blank journals or sketchbooks all day long. Go for it. But if you want to be able to download and print the books, you will need PDF software. Adobe Acrobat DC is free and there are instructions on how to go get that if you don't have that. There's a video and there's also an infographic that shows you how to do that. Um, it is free for Mac and Windows PCs, so no big deal. Because um, you need something that will open a PDF and will print it out. If you have a different kind of PDF reading software, that is totally cool. As long as you are comfortable using it and you know how to use it, go for it. I won't be able to help you on that because I don't have any other, I have Acrobat Pro and that's, that's, that's what I got. There are other PDF compatible software programs that will print for you. I just don't know the ins and outs of them. I'll just throw that out there. The other thing that you will need is a printer that will print double-sided. Not all printers will print double-sided. You kind of do need one that will print both sides or maybe you are a pro at printing one side and then flipping the pages over and telling the printer to print the other side. So to me, that's, it makes my brain want to explode. So there's, that's another thing I won't be able to help you with. But I know that there's a lot of folks out there that have printers that don't print double-sided or they only print manual double-sided, which means you have to print one side and then physically go turn the papers over and feed them back in and then the printer will print the other side. I don't know how to do that either because every printer is different. I'm just telling you, be comfortable with your printer. That being said, if you print through Adobe Acrobat, it takes a lot of that guesswork out for you because Adobe Acrobat kind of overrides the printer driver and then that way the printer has like a set of instructions already right there. So that's why I like using Adobe Acrobat. The other reason why these are in PDF is because I want them to be the correct size and with a PDF you can make sure that something is going to print the correct size. You can also choose what pages you want to print if you don't want to print them all. Maybe your printer ran out of ink and you want to reprint pages three and four or something. You can just go back and do that and it's a lot easier that way. Okay. So what is it that you're going to learn? Well, you will learn from start to finish how to make a miniature, fully functional, readable book. From the covers to how to print the PDFs pages, how to cut the PDF pages apart to make your signatures, how to sew those signatures together into a text block, how to attach end papers and headbands, 
we measure and construct the cover, we install the text block, we add ridges to the spine. There's a, there's a little video about how to add ridges to the spine. There is not just video instruction, there's also about 15 quick reference guides. Most of the major steps have a quick reference guide. So you can print something out, you can put these pages together. So maybe you're gonna go to the cabin, wherever that is for the weekend, um, when we're allowed to go to cabins again. And maybe you're not gonna have internet, but you're gonna take stuff to make some books. Well, you can print out the quick reference guides. And as long as you've already watched the videos, the quick reference guides should give enough information to spark your memory to make you remember. They're not going to replace the videos with the quick reference guides. They are exactly what the name implies, which is just for reference. There's also recipe cards, and those will highlight the ingredients needed to recreate some of the different books that I've made. So it talks about how to make this style of book with the little corners. It talks about how to make like these styles of books with the, with the book cloth and the different images on the cover. We go through how to make this, which is similar to that Flora, that first Flora book that I made. And if you want to be able to make a blank book for either a sketchbook or a writing journal. I show you how to just cut apart a piece of paper and make blank pages for books because you got to know that. <laughs> there are also, let's see, how to make book cloth in two different ways so that you'll be able to have some options so that you'll have something to cover your book covers in because that's going to be that's going to be important. There are 12 original end paper designs that have been created special for small scale book bindings. So there's over a dozen cover images ready to print out, add to your book covers with little labels and there's like some little spine, tiny little spine labels too. And then there's also a page of miniaturized library ephemera, of course, to, you know, make your book look legit. So there is that. Whew, I'm um, trying to think. There's a lot. It took me to get Alice in Wonderland ready, the book ready for print, took me three days. The other ones weren't quite so, so intense, but still all the images have to be edited. That took a minute. That, that's a lot of images to edit, resize, and place into imposition. Alice in Wonderland I think is 224 pages. I think the Book of Flora is 160 something. Uh, let's see, Bird's Lore, The Moths, and The Ferns, these are 96 page books. And then Pose Tales, I think this is 112. So if that gives you any kind of a reference for how big these books are. I just wanted to put that out there and let you know that the class is now open for enrollment, finally, sorry about that. If you have never used Teachable before, I highly suggest you go and sign up for my free class, which that is the easiest way to make an account at Teachable is to sign in through a free class. So if you do that, it doesn't cost anything, there's no obligation, there's no time limit. Maybe that would help you to get acquainted with the website and how the website works, where things are, maybe get comfortable. Like I said, there's no time limit in taking the class anyway. Maybe you sign up for the free class and you get in there and you're like, nope, I can't, I can't do this. I cannot. It's like me and reading a Kindle book. It's like, oh, nope, got to have the real thing. Perhaps that is not for you. If you like watching YouTube videos and if you like learning from YouTube videos, then Teachable will probably be very, very comfortable and very familiar and you'll love that. I hope you liked my little vignette that I built for, um, for my little bookcase. Yeah, I'm, it's ridiculous. I'll have to talk about that sometime. But I just wanted to make this a quickish video just to let you know about the class. I've had a, um, a lot of folks calling and ask, calling. I've had a lot of folks messaging me and asking, so I apologize that this is delayed. There are other books coming down the pipeline, but they are not ready for, for printing yet. So 
as I get books ready, more will be added to the library of printables um, in the class because we have to make a whole library. Got to have more books to print. But I also like the empty ones. I think these are adorable. I think these would make great gifts, especially if somebody's going off to college. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room, and I just think it's sweet. All right, guys, I hope everybody is having a great weekend. I went grocery shopping early this morning before the crowds kicked in, which I highly recommend you do if you have to go out of the house. Go early in the morning, as soon as they open, get in, get out, a lot less stress that way. Um, I will be back with you all soon. I'm actually working on, starting to work on a book, concept journal. So I've been meaning to start this concept journal for a year. Actually, I did start it a year ago. I have the cover boards cut, ready to build my book. Uh, I have the pages printed for the most part. That's life, that's life for you. Even the booksmith can't make books sometimes. Or they get distracted and they just make lots and lots of little tiny ones. <laughs> you guys know me, you know me. All right, y'all, big huge love from Nick the Booksmith and I will see you all really, really soon in the next video. Bye guys.